for the love of God, just come out. What's up? Welcome to Ingenuity. Today we're going to be working on the intake manifold off our WRX engine going into our mid-engine Honda CRX. We've got some fuel stuff to do. we got some wiring. we got some TGV deletes. we got a lot to do in a short time to do it. So, without further ado, Maestro, hit it. So fresh off the engine, this is what the intake manifold looks like. We got the fuel rails attached, so the wiring is all attached. It's a very modular design that Subaru came up with, and it works really, really well. Um, that way, when you're taking everything apart, it comes off as one assembly. It's nice and neat. Everything's kind of plug and play, nice to go. But kind of ugly. So the goal for the day is to clean up a lot of this wiring, get the unnecessary plumbing taken care of, and taking a look at the fuel system because I have some concerns about just how rusty it is. So, as one would expect, the first step to getting this all cleaned up is to take it all apart and remove all the unnecessary crap. So, like any good metal band, let's work it Quick PSA for all of you out there about to tear the wiring harness off your engine without labeling it. Tape and a marker. Just do it. This is the infamous Subaru TGV housing. Calls for great consternation and hubbub on the internet. Um, there's a lot of debate as to its actual function as well as the performance benefits of deleting uh, the assembly itself. That said, if you are going to delete these, you do need to code it out of the ECM because it is going to attempt to activate the, the motor and then it's gonna watch for the sensor signal to see that the motor is working. So if, obviously if nothing's moving, it's gonna know and throw a check engine light. Also, there's a fuel trim adjustment that it makes when uh, those valves are enclosed, so we wanna make sure we code that out so you don't have any check engine lights or running issues. Now, that said, to delete these, there's three ways that I've done it. One, you just take the flapper valve out. Uh, it's quick and easy, you just gotta grind these screws out, boop, pop the valves out, and you're good to go. You leave everything else alone so that way you're not plugging up any holes. The second way, and the way that we're gonna do it today, is we're gonna take the valve out, we're gonna take the rod, the motor, the sensor, um, and then we're also going to cut uh, blend and polish the whole housing itself so that way this plate gets out of here uh, and it flows as, as well as it can. The third way is to just buy a deleted housing from someone like IAG, you know, CNC billet piece. Uh, probably flows better than the DIY version, but since we pride ourselves in our DIY ethos here at Engineering, I figured let's do it ourselves. All right, so if the car gods are smiling on you, you'll be able to use the number one Phillips screwdriver and break these freight. If the gods are not smiling on you, you may be forced to use a grinder, a plasma cutter, you know, punches of various sorts. Why do you hate me? Um, and we will see if the gods are favoring us today. And we're stripped. Well, I guess the car gods have forsaken us today. <laughs> third of the way there? <laughs> so for this next part, some of you may or may not be offended. I'm guessing if you're a fan of the channel, then you will be in the latter group because, well, it involves one of these. See, that wasn't so bad. So now we got the, the flaps cut out. Now I just got to go in and grind uh, those ridges down. We're going to uh, grab some gaskets. Um, make sure that we uh, port everything out as far as we as we possibly can to optimize as much airflow as we possibly can. I'm just going to apologize right now. I don't have the equipment or the cinema grip, cinema tag, tag, cinema tag, cinema, 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 cinema graphic. Is that a word? I don't know. I, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how to film this uh, so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do it and uh, look something like this.
So there we go. TGVs are just about done. Just got to wait for that JB weld to cure. If you've watched some other TGV delete videos, you may have noticed that on theirs, the way most people do is they just take a bolt that's roughly that size, put some JB weld on it, shove it through the hole, grind it smooth when it's cured. As you know, I kind of like to overbuild things, so <laughs> I like to tap the hole um, and thread um, the rod in. I cut that little slot in the end so you can use a flathead screwdriver to, you know, to, to drive it in. But yeah, just wait till the JB Weld uh, cures and then you just grind that smooth and then these things are ready to go. I thought I had uh, aluminum cleaner, but as it turns out, I don't. So I did order some, but it won't be here in time for, uh, to get this video out on time. So, uh, <laughs> I'll have to wait for the next time. Um, the... Um, soda blasting that I did on it didn't get them quite as clean as I'd like so I, I kind of want to go through and, and clean them up just a little bit more I wire brushed a little bit um, it just wasn't really getting the effect either so yeah we're just gonna we're gonna need some of that some of the uh, the acid wash stuff to get the just the corrosion that's built up on the outside of these off get them get them looking nice so we can get them back on the engine uh, there's a lot of cleaning we have to do on the engine too so I'll probably be washing that uh, while I'm at it so <laughs> we'll be doing that next time I had hoped to uh, to get to the harness in this video too but I'm still waiting on connectors uh, to show up for those. Well, since we are both out of parts and time, <laughs> that'll do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. But as always, remember, on projects like those dingleberries, <laughs> sometimes you just need a little ingenuity. I will see you next time.